Hello everybody, uh, time for, I guess you could call this an unboxing, I probably wouldn't call it that, but uh, this might be more of a feature, um, and a fun feature at that. Uh, this is going to be on the Hot Wheels Gran Turismo 8 car series. Um, Hot Wheels is doing a couple of these. Um, one is this 8 car series, and then I believe we're going to see a premium Gran Turismo series later on in the year, but we're going to focus on this one now. Um, I know many of you are familiar with this series because it has been out in the UK for the last uh, last couple of weeks, last few weeks, and I was able to acquire a set from the UK thanks to my good friend David Tilly, and um, and uh, I wanted to kind of feature these cars. I'm going to be doing a full blog feature with these opened, but I wanted to go through them now. Maybe I'll even open up a couple. Maybe I'll open up all of them and and show them off. A couple of little details about this set. Uh, like I said, eight cars based on the Gran Turismo um, video game. I'm not a gamer. I don't know too much about the game. I know it's very realistic. I know that a lot of people love playing it. I know that uh, it's good for the car nerds um, out there. And um, I'm very much a car nerd, but I'm not a gamer. And uh, so I'm assuming that maybe these are these are liveries that are unique to the game or familiar by racers, you guys can fill me in. But nonetheless, um, it's a cool series. I think it's going to be a popular series with um, collectors. Here's the thing about it. We've seen these eight car sets before, six car sets sometimes. For example, um, this particular set is at stores now. I think it's been seen in the UK. Now it's over in... Uh, it's been in... Um, in Walmart's here in the United States, the BMW series, and um, you know I think people really like it. I like it. Unique card art. We saw the Porsche series. We've seen a Mustang series, Corvette. You can go on and on and on. I'm sure we'll keep seeing them. So you would assume that the uh, Gran Turismo series um, would also be something like that. You know, just like the BMW, we're seeing it in the UK, and then it will show up in at Walmart's in the states. That is not the case. It is going to show up in the States, but it won't be at Walmart. It won't be at Target. I don't think it's going to be at Toys R Us. It's going to be at maybe Kroger. I don't know for sure. Uh, maybe specialty grocery stores or auto parts stores. It'll be here, but I don't know in what kind of numbers. So you're not going to see big full bins of it um, in stores and um, or in you know in your Walmarts. I'm assuming it's going to be fairly easy to find. I'm not saying this is going to be some rarity and it's going to exist in small numbers. I'm just saying you're going to have to look differently and look in different places to find it. So there it is. You can see the artwork and you can see the car. And we're going to go ahead and turn this on. All right. So. Most of these cars are getting modified. Hearing that rip, I hope that doesn't make any of you angry that I'm ripping these open. But, um, you know, a lot of these castings are getting modified to uh, metal spoilers, but I'm noticing on this one that's not the case, at least on the Lamborghini um, Gallardo, the Super Ligera. Again, this one's great. I mean, it's got full detail. And we'll find out if that's the case on all these models, but full detail, front, um, back, side, top. I mean, that's pretty cool. That might be a Lamborghini thing. Now I'm looking at these for the first time just like you are. Well, some of you already have these, but trying to determine a favorite making a mess here. Trying to determine a favorite I think is going to be kind of hard, but I do like that Lamborghini. I'm just going to start placing these in places. Next up, casting we have not seen for a long time, the Jaguar uh, XJ220. Again, I love the artwork. It makes it harder to open, but still, it's all about the model. Rip. I don't know, is that rear detail? It doesn't, but there's there any place to really put it. 
Again, I don't know the last time this model was used. It could have popped up in a mainline or in a basic range a few years ago, but I think it's been a good five, six years since we've seen it. Maybe it was last seen in the Speed Machines line. I'm not sure. But again, great livery, great rice, racing livery. Gran Turismo logo there on the front. On the front hood. While you're looking at that, let's open the Pagani. Oh, I can spell it. I don't think I can say it. Yura? Oh man, I used to know. I used to know how to say the name of that Pagani. You guys are all saying it correctly while you're watching this video, but I'm not gonna. Jag, you can go there. Here's the Pagani. Now, we've seen this. I think all other versions of this model have come with the J5 wheels. I think this is the first time we're seeing the MC5 on the Pagani. It's got the uh, the rear detailing, which I think is a Pagani request, at least to have their logo there on the back. It doesn't have the tail lights, which I think they've done in the past before. Um, I like the detailing on this one. If you look, it's kind of got this kind of subtle design on the top, and I don't know if that's a logo. What does it say on the hood? It says something. I can't see it. Um, and I don't see anything on the artwork. But you can, if you do look at the artwork, you can see it's a blister. You can see this, uh, that the detailing is there on the hood. And uh, it is definitely there on the model, too. There on the rear. And on the front. That's a cool model. I kept the first two colors of the Pagani in my collection. I haven't collect kept the other ones, but I think this one definitely goes in. And while you're looking at that, we're going to jump into the Dodge Viper, the SRT10, the 2005. Rip. Here, Pagani, you go right there. There's the Viper. Mm. It's fine. No rear detailing. I like that new Viper better. Um, but this one has that uh, the racing number on it. Other than that, I guess it's nice. It's nice and black. Has the Gran Turismo logo on it. I guess they all probably do. Let's look on the Lamborghini. Yeah, it's there. So yeah, take a look at the Viper. And we will now look at the Lamborghini. The Aventador LP704. It looks like this one has a little bit of a um, wheel issue. See that's kind of jammed up in there. We'll see if that's permanent or uh, something we can fix. Rip. Showing I'm doing it. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, that one's jammed up in there. I don't think I can. Oh, pop. Did you hear that? That wasn't my thumb, that was the wheel. There we go. That looks good. I don't know if it kind of rolls. It has that little bit of a cambered look to it, right? That's kind of cool, right? Kids these days might like it. I've liked the Aventador cast, and I did like it in the um, with the black wheels and the orange from a few years ago. This one's similar to that black hood. Does that have rear detailing? It doesn't. So the Super Laguerre got it, but not this one. And while you're looking at that, we'll go to what I think is the sleeper of the set, which is the Aston Martin 177. Problem with the Aston Martin 177 is that the artwork, the car is fantastic, but I haven't really warmed up to the model. I just felt it like sits too high. It was a little too small. And I always thought it needed 10 spokes, and it really looks 
it looks better. Now I've got it on that kind of this little rough thing, so if I put it, um, once I put it in the Lamley Studio, some of its, you know, stance flaws might come out, but this version is probably the best one I've seen with the darker rims. It's just got to look mean. The 177 has to look mean. This one didn't look mean to me. This one is meaner. So yeah, I like this one. Some some detailing up top. I don't know if you can see the stripes. I do like how they're doing this. See, this is these are these kind of decos they won't do in a basic a lot of the times because it's too subtle. They got to pop. But I assume they think people are going to buy these as sets, or you know, they're going to try and get all eight cars. So you can be a little more subtle in the deco, right? A little bit cooler in the racing deco. I like this model a lot. Yeah, it does, this this it doesn't pop on a card. It doesn't need to though. It looks really really good. Um, again, I don't know why this is going to be in other stores other than Walmart, but um, wherever that store is, they're going to enjoy. Uh, seeing all the collectors coming in to get them. So, I really do like the Aston now, the one that I think a lot of you are most interested in, and a hearty welcome back to the R32 Skyline. Funny that uh, all the Japanese stuff that, uh, you know, everyone's still in a frenzy over the Japan uh, historics. All Everyone's getting their cases, and everyone's super excited. And to think that this model, this casting, the R32 has been around for years and years and years. This casting is what, 15 years old, I think? And yeah, is it a little dated? Well, of course it is. If they were to redo it now, would they do it differently? You bet they would. Um, there's some elements to it that aren't very R32-like. But it's still a classic casting. It's a casting that I know a lot of people like. Um, there's a team of three down in New Zealand that uh, is very fond of this model, and they've told me that. Um, and there are some details to really get behind, you know, on the rear. And this one, does it have... Oh, yeah, skyline. So rear detailing, taillights done. Oh, that's nice. And then, yeah, top and sides. doesn't have the front headlights. But um, we haven't seen this model since... I don't know, it's been at least five or six years, and we've had plenty to keep us occupied um, since this one vanished, like, uh, you know, an R34 and a Hakoska and a Ken Mary um, and an RX3 and a uh, Toyota 2000 GT and a Celica and a, um, I think a couple of uh, Fair Lady Zs, and anyway, we're good. We're covered. But nice to see you back, and nice to see this is the Japanese entry to this this line. Oh, I don't want to rip that one open yet. Now, I saved what I think is probably the best for last, the signature model. Um, when Hot Wheels announced the Ford GT LM a few years ago, I don't know why the LM was at the end, the Le Mans, I assume. I was, so I jumped on Google, and I saw... A black Ford GT with a big fat wing and the Gran Turismo logo on it. And I said, I like that. I hope Hot Wheels does it. Well, they probably didn't have the license at the time. But they do now. And so this, I think, is the signature Ford GT LM. Um, we've seen it years and years and years. We've seen it in premium lines. We've seen it in the basics. We've seen it as a treasure hunt. This, I think, is its culmination. Now, I know we're going to see another version of this later, but so nice to see this done. And hey, look at that. Really happy to see that this one, come in a little close to give this one its proper due. Look at this. That's the plastic wing. They switched this to a metal wing um, for this year's version, and it's fine, but it just it's just nicer and it's a little tighter and crisper with the plastic wing. So very, very nice to see that this one is sporting the plastic wing. Um, this is a great model. I've always liked this one. I just like the Ford GT in general. We're obviously we're going to see the new version of the GT, the 2017. But I've liked this one, and it looks great. It's kind of a matte black. It's got 
um, detailing on the top, detailing on the side. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have rear, it doesn't need it. Um, I'm really fond of this one. So, yeah, there you go. This is the Gran Turismo series. I'm going to make a mess here, but who cares? I think we've got, uh, where is that Pagani? One, two, three, four. Uh, I think we've got some good ones here. It's going to be a fun set. It will be in stores in the United States. Well, as soon as I know which ones, um, I will definitely uh, put that on the blog. But um, you friends in the UK, you enjoy having this first. And uh, we'll talk to you later.